Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Check us out, patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Casey Crime Photographer. The original air date, April the 6th, 1950, and the title is The Fire. <laughs> Good evening. This is Ken Roberts inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, crime photographer. Ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, The Fire. Morning. The first faint glow of dawn is lighting the sky. Inside a small, cheaply furnished apartment in a shabby old-fashioned building glows the more sinister light of fast-spreading flame. Outside its locked door, firemen swing their axes at... The blazes in that corner, Ed. We may kill it with a hand extinguisher, Chief. I think we can. Get into the bedroom, Joe. Anyone sleeping there is probably overcome. I'll attend to him. Chemicals over there, boys. We'll soon have this one licked. Yeah, but not if we'd got the alarm a minute later. You're right, Ed. This could have been a racer. Chief! What is it, Joe? Come here. Take a look. Where? Lying half under the bed. This guy. Oh, smoke got him. Smoke don't make a guy's head all bloody. Who? His skull's been crushed. Yeah, and that's what did it. That iron bar on the floor beside him. Hey, Joe, this man's been murdered. According to the medical examiner, Miss Williams, this guy was bumped off about 11 o'clock last night. Well, then he'd been dead all around seven hours when the fireman found him, Captain Logan. Yeah, that's right. After the killer sucked him with that hunk of iron, he proceeded to give this two-room kitchenette and bath a real going over. Yeah. Then he found what he'd been looking for and started the fire and beat it. That's the way it sizes up, Casey. He started the fire, of course, hoping to cover up his murder in search of the place. Sure. He started the fire in a pile of photographic film, Casey. You know how that stuff will spread ablaze. Yeah, and how. I was looking at the few bits of film that weren't burned. Old negatives, apparently. That guy seems to have gone in for photography in a big way. A lot of equipment in his kitchenette and lodgers, tanks, good stuff. That's yeah, so my tech man tell me. Have you found any lead to the killer, Captain Logan? None so far, Miss Williams. What could the killer have been searching for? Uh, that's a payoff question. What have you found out about the dead guy, pal? Uh, not much. All I could learn here was his name was Henry Milton, a quiet guy who kept to himself and held some kind of office job with the C.J. Winber Company. I'm going to the Winber factory as soon as its office is open at 9 o'clock and... Try to get a real lowdown on the guy. Good. Annie and I will go with you. Yes, we'd like to know more about Mr. Henry Milton. I'm shocked, deeply shocked to hear about the tragic death of poor um, uh, Hilton, um, Sergeant uh, uh, Rogan. Milton uh, was the man's name, Mr. Winber, and mine's Logan, Captain Logan. Oh, yes, 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 to be sure, yes, Logan, yes. Good, faithful old uh, Milton. I'd like you to tell me all you can about this man. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I think uh, perhaps I'd better turn you over to my executive vice president. He keeps in slightly closer touch with details and personnel than I do. Oh, not that I'm unfamiliar. Familiar with the people who work for me, Captain. I regard them all as partners and close friends, but, um... um... You rang, Mr. Winber? Yes, uh, Purvis. Tell Mr. Haywood I want to see him. Yes, sir. Uh, just a minute. Has there been any news of Crowley yet? No, sir. Well, don't neglect to inform me at once of any messages received. You'll be told immediately, Mr. Winber. Yes, that's all. Get Haywood. Yes, sir. Now, Captain... 
as a policeman, you might give me a bit of advice. Yeah? You see, my cashier, a chap named Crowley, went away on a two-week vacation 16 days ago. He was due back at his desk day before yesterday, but he hasn't appeared. And nobody in the plant here or at his home has received even so much as a postal card from him since he left. Now, uh, do you think I have reason for concern? If he was my cashier, I'd feel concerned. Have you investigated the books? Not yet, uh, but... You better uh, have an audit done on those books right away. Your man is bonded, of course. Oh, yes, yes, the firm will face no loss, but uh, I pride myself on my judgment of character, and it would be a sad blow. Uh... Oh, you're here, Haywood. Yes, C.J.? Uh, this gentleman is Captain... Um, Captain uh, Logan of the police. Police? Yes, this is Mr. Haywood, my executive vice president, Captain. How do you do? Uh, nice to know you, Captain. And uh, that lady and gentleman over there, um, uh, will you introduce them, Captain? Uh, Miss Williams, Mr. Haywood, and... Uh... Mr. Casey, and they're on the morning express. How do you do, Mr. Haywood? Hi, a pleasure. Ah, policemen and newspaper people. This must mean that you've got bad news about Crowley, C.J. Uh, unpleasant news. No, this gentleman and lady are here about a murder. Murder? A man employed in your offices was killed last night, and his body discovered early this morning. A man named Milton. Not... Henry Milton. That's the name. Yes, poor old uh, Henry. He was in our sales department, Haywood. He was a bookkeeper, C.J., third assistant in Crowley's department. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, that's what I meant. Now, how was he murdered, Captain? Tell me. Uh, will you excuse me? As Captain Logan has already told me the distressing news and I have other things to do, you won't mind. Go ahead, Mr. Winburn. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Miss... Um, um... Uh, William. Yes, of course, of course. And you, Mr... Um, uh... Casey. Oh, yes, quite so, yes. Please call on me when I can give you some more assistance, Captain. I'm always ready to help. Thanks. Good morning to you all. Good morning. Well, uh, now maybe we'll find out something, Casey. About time. I uh, heard your comment, Miss Williams. Evidently, you haven't had a very illuminating interview with Mr. Winber. Uh, Mr. Haywood, it was a total blackout. That guy must have inherited this big outfit. Huh? He did, from his father. Oh, don't misunderstand him. C.J. is a grand fellow, very shrewd in his way. He simply doesn't keep in touch with many things that... Uh... Those things are my job. Uh, tell me about Henry Milton, Captain. I came here to be told things about him, Mr. Haywood. How long did he work for this firm? Well, I'd say offhand, at least six years. He was an excellent bookkeeper. Uh, what do you know about him personally? Oh, only that he was a bachelor, without any apparent vices. He was a quiet fellow who kept to himself. And, uh... <laughs> I'll be surprised if anybody here can tell you much more. Uh, I'd like to speak to some of the other people in his department. Yes, sir. Uh, send them in here one by one, and without any knowledge of his murder or my purpose. Very well. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm afraid we're not going to get very much here, Casey. Yeah, it seems this Milton was a kind of mystery man. Oh, Casey, did you notice the gorgeous diamond that Mr. Haywood wears on his finger? Yeah. Quite a ring, isn't it, Annie? Yeah, I, I must have turned a delicate shade of envious lettuce green when I saw it. It's four carrots, at least. <laughs> a beautiful engagement size. <laughs> yeah, Casey, why don't you buy your girlfriend a little piece of ice like that? Yeah, why don't I also buy a yacht and a country estate? <laughs> yeah, but Haywood doesn't flash the only big headlight in this joint. The one C.J. Winber had on his finger wasn't broken off any bottle. Mr. Winber wore a diamond ring? Yeah. Did you notice it, Annie? Well, no. no I didn't either. Huh. I don't know how you could have missed it. Oh, well, come to think of it, though, he, he turned the stone around to the inside of his hand while you were introducing yourself, Logan. I guess he's one of those nervous guys who fiddle with things they wear. I brought you our head bookkeeper, Captain Logan. Fine, Mr. Haywood. Now we can get back to business. <laughs> Hop in the car, Annie. Mm-hmm, with pleasure. <sighs> well, time we've spent in the Winber plant's been a dead loss, Casey. Yeah, nobody knows anything about that guy Milton at all. Except that nobody liked him. Which doesn't give Captain Logan much to work on. Well, well, we might as well enjoy the scenery, eh? What scenery? The factories on that side or the billboards on this side? Ah, uh -huh. uh, this becomes a nice old country road after we round the curve just ahead, kid. Yep, we'll see spring busting out all over. Oh, I'm too tired to, to look at it. You know, someday I'm going to quit this newspaper racket and get married and live like a human being. Yeah? Yeah. Pick the guy? 
I'll take the first one who slips a diamond on my finger. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be the size of Mr. Haywood. Anything that shines just a little bit will do. Oh. So whoever gives it to me won't have to be in the country estate class. You mean, uh... uh oh, that leaves the field wide open, huh? Yeah. yeah well, personally, I got no use for diamonds. You wouldn't. <laughs> Ah, uh, you take my advice, kid, and hold out for a country estate. <laughs> there, now. Now you can look at some real scenery, Annie. Look down there on that valley below us, huh? So what? Ah, oh, so it's nature in her fairest aspect. Budding trees, new grass, birds. And bees. Hey, nature pulled a sneak play there. Look at that. There's been a landslide. Mm, part of the hill took a trip down to the valley. Hmm. Must have happened very recently. I was along this road only a month or so ago. Well, stop and ask that old guy sitting on the fence. Oh, what I want to get back to the office, Casey, and then home. What do we care about an old... The slide's messed up a view I've often enjoyed, Annie. <gasps> hey, Pop. Uh, speaking to me, young fella? Yeah. Uh, when did this landslide happen? Uh, just a little over two weeks ago. Um, during that raining spell we had. Uh, rain did it, huh? Yeah, uh, I imagine so. It happened during the night, so nobody knows. How far did it slide? Uh, quite a spell... As far as that, huh? Yeah, maybe a little further. Hmm. Uh, I figure rain loosened the ground under a big rock it was here. And when the rock started rolling, it carried part of the hill along. You mean the big white rock that looked like a warty cucumber? That's the one. Yeah, it's a wonder that old cucumber rock didn't do a Brody long time ago, Annie. It was only sort of balanced there. Oh, isn't that interesting? And I've been telling folks for years it was going to fall someday and take half the hillside with it. I always said, uh, let a strong man stick an eight-foot crowbar under that air rock in the right place, give a healthy heave, and over she'd go. No man ever tried it, but the rain proved my point. Sure did, Pop. Well, let's get along, Casey. Hmm? Oh, oh, okay, Ann. Well, thanks, Pop. Uh, so long. <laughs> so long, young fella. Uh, good luck to you and your missus. I'm not his missus. I'm not even a friend. Well, Annie... I hate men who have no use for diamonds. You be... Now, as you were saying, Casey, before I hit the weight on that customer... I wasn't saying anything, Ethelbert. We was gonna say something, wasn't you? You ain't gonna just hang over this bar and not talk. Got nothing to talk about. Hmm. How about the Milton murder? Have the cops learned anything new since yesterday morning that... No. Uh... Hmm. Where's Miss Williams? No. Ah, uh, well, the office, I guess. She, um, saw her at you? Well, if you must know, yes. What was she sore about? I don't. Oh, women. Women. You never let a guy understand them, Ethelbert. You think they're kidding about something. Like something like diamond rings, for instance. And then you kid back. <laughs> Find yourself in the soup. Hmm. I don't pretend to know much about women, Casey, but uh, if perchance it was diamond engagement rings you tried to kid about, I have learned that ain't a safe subject with the unfair sex. Us bachelors are natural prey for the female of the species, and all women are wolves. Is that so? And Huh? Oh, Miss Williams, I, I didn't see you come in. Oh, that was evident. And how are you, Casey? Uh, oh, Why, I haven't seen much of you since yesterday. Oh, uh, well, I've been around. Oh, have you? <laughs> Guess I didn't notice. Uh... Anne, about yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Milton murder. I suppose, uh, I suppose you've talked to Captain Logan today. Is there anything new? No, look, kid, what I started to say is... I uh, just got some news from the city desk. It has no real bearing on the Milton case, but... I don't care anything about the Milton case. I'm trying to tell I'm you I'm sure that... you'd like to hear this. Well, I don't want to... That any... missing cashier at the Wimber plant. They just found out that he embezzled at least $100,000 from the firm before he left. Well, so what... He did? Uh-huh. And C.J. Winber and his bonding company have just called the cops to start a search for him. Hey, the guy's got over two weeks' start. 
Now, uh, what was the matter that you wanted to talk about? Two crimes connected with a Winber outfit. I huh? asked you what Embezzlement what... and murder. Starting at the same point and becoming evident at almost the same time. Casey, you started. Anne, I got a hunch. Oh, no. Not one of those things. Yeah. Don't keep us in suspense, Look, Casey. we figured that Milton's killer found what he was after in that apartment. Well, maybe we figured wrong. Hmm? Continue, Superman. Oh, come on. Cut the rough stuff, will you, Annie? Why, what do you mean? I don't... Tell me your idea, Casey. I'm interested. You're, you're okay. Hey, pal, I'll tell you what. Yeah. It looks to me now as though the killer started that fire because he'd searched all night without finding what he was after. He started the fire not to cover his traces, but to destroy the thing he couldn't find. Hey, hey, you may be right. Yeah, well, I'll try to prove I'm right now, tonight. So long, Ann. I'm going to Milton's burned out. Hey, wait a minute, Casey. Casey, wait for me. <laughs> here. Someday you're going to get into trouble for opening doors that you have no right to open. The cops expected to keep people out of Milton's apartment. They should have done a better patch-up job on the door. The fireman busted down. You know, I expected a cop to be on guard out there. Yeah, so did I. Homicide guys went over this joint so thoroughly, I guess Logan figured there was nothing to guard here. Yeah, they went over it so thoroughly that I can't imagine us finding anything that they missed. They didn't know what they were looking for. Do you? Mm, not exactly. Well, never mind. Don't waste time talking. Now, let's see it. Cops and the killer didn't search where? Um, uh, how about the plumbing? Eh, hiding stuff in pipes and sink traps. An old gag. You can bet Logan's guys used their wrenches here. Or... Yeah, seems to me they and the killer didn't overlook any possible hiding place. I think they did, Annie. Hmm? Annie, look, the fire didn't reach this bedroom. And the curtain on this window is still in place. Well, nothing could be hidden in that curtain. It's net. We can see right through it. Yeah, sure, but the metal rod it hangs on is hollow. Hey, that's so. Well, let's see, anyway. Tubing isn't even fully closed in the back. Mm -hmm. It's an extension rod, see? Yeah. And I pull it apart. Annie! What? You found something? Look! What is it? It's film. Rolled up film. The roll's no bigger than a cigarette. Stuck in the end of the inside rod. Where do I unroll it? Mm -hmm. It's negatives. 35 millimeter negatives. Four, five, six of them. Uh, what are the pictures on them? How can I tell in here? We'll take them out in the hall where there's light. Uh -huh. <gasps> Casey! Oh. Who are you? No! Don't hit me with that! Oh! Uh, you're, you're all right, Annie. Are you really okay? Huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Casey. Uh, how about you? Yeah, I'm all right, I guess. Oh, who's the man who hit us? The guy who killed Milton. He came back here to go on with his search. When he saw us find what he was after, he wouldn't do action. And good. Did, did he get the films, Casey? Yeah. Oh. oh, but when I came to, I found this little torn piece of negative in my hand, Annie. Guess I had a death grip on that one, huh? Uh -huh. Is there anything on that oh, fragment well, let me that see. might... Yeah. Yeah, there's something on it. Yeah. A, a big black shape and, and, and... Isn't that a hand showing there? A closed fist. Oh. What could that do us? Yeah. Well, Casey, you can enlarge it. Wait a minute. What? This big shape in back of the fist. I've seen that before, that shape. Oh, what is it? can't place it. It's just something familiar. Wait a minute. I got it now. That's the, the warty cucumber. Warty the cucumber? The rock, you know, the big oh. balanced rock that caused the landslide. Come on, kid. We're going back to the office where I can blow this thing up and be sure. Look at this blow-up, Annie. It shows the big cucumber rock and plenty more. What more? The hand. It isn't simply a closed fist. It's wrapped around a crowbar. Crowbar? Well, Casey, I, I well, don't Well, you'll what... get it all in a minute. Look, what do you see on the hand in this picture? Uh, a ring. Set with a big stone that may be a diamond. Yes. And we've met two guys who wear big rings like that. Haywood and C.J. Winber. Either Haywood or Winber murdered Milton. And another guy. Another guy? Uh-huh. And either Haywood or Winber socked you and me just a little while ago. And I'm not forgetting that. But which one? Early tomorrow morning. You and I and Logan will go to the Winber factory and find out. Hey, 
suppose, Captain, that you've come to see us about the distressing disappearance of Mr. Crowley, my former cashier. I don't handle embezzlement cases, Mr. Winburn. I'm strictly a homicide cop. Well, then you're continuing your inquiry about the murder of poor um, Milton? About the murder of Milton and your cashier, Crowley. Who uh, what? Well, Crowley hasn't been murdered that anyone knows of. One person knows of it. The guy who did the killing. I say, well, what? That's a nice diamond ring you wear, Mr. Winburn. Did I? Captain, how can you turn the subject to rings immediately after you mention murder? Murder to Logan, Mr. Winburn, is simply a matter of business. Your ring interests him because he didn't notice it when we were here before. You had the diamond turned inwards. Yeah, for some reason you got it out of sight when I introduced myself as a cop. Uh, I, I'm afraid I don't understand. Uh, uh, but for no reason, maybe, you haven't bothered to hide it today. Now, will you gentlemen please tell me what you're driving at? You sent for me, C.J.? Oh. Sit down, Mr. Haywood, and join our party. Thanks. I didn't expect to find you here, Captain. Pleasant surprise. Good morning, Miss Williams. Uh, Casey? Good morning. Have a good night's sleep, Haywood? Why, yes. yes. Fine, thank you. I didn't. Neither did Miss Williams. We had headaches. I'm sorry. How did you sleep, Mr. Wimber? I always sleep well. And now I'd like to know why you're I'm going to tell you with Logan's permission. Shoot, pal. Well, some time ago, one of the big shots in this company started to steal money from us. And he covered his thefts by doctoring the books. That sort of thing was bound to be discovered, of course, eventually. And Mr. Big Shot planned to cover himself by shifting the blame to an honest cashier. Mr. Casey... Your cashier was going away on a vacation, Mr. Winber. And on the night before he was to leave, Mr. Big Executive, on some phony pretext, got him to the top of a hill not far from here and pushed him over the steep edge. You mean Crowley? Yes, Mr. Haywood. Then this Mr. Big Shot, who had a crowbar handy, pried several tons of balanced rock off its perch, causing a landslide that buried Crowley very, very deep. And uh, how uh, do you bring uh, Milton into this, Mr. Casey? Milton was a bookkeeper, Mr. Winber. He'd gotten wise to both the embezzlement and the embezzler. And he decided to cash in on what he knew. He began trailing this executive and sneaking pictures of him, very incriminating pictures. One of them actually caught the guy tipping over the balanced rock. Finally, he showed prints of his pictures to Mr. Big Shot and told him to come across with heavy dough, or else... Milton tried to blackmail this Big Shot. Exactly, Mr. Haywood. The Big Shot then killed him, took the prints, and did his best to find the negatives that they'd been made from. But failing that, he tried to burn the negatives by setting fire to the place. But a fire company reached Milton's apartment before the blaze had done much damage. Well, I managed to find the negatives, and he got them away from me. But he left a little piece of one of the negatives in my hand. That's going to send him to the chair. And uh, who is this man, Mr. Casey? The guy who wears a swell diamond ring, Mr. Winber. Good heavens, you don't think that I... No. You wore your ring today. But the guy who left that piece of negative in my hand last night knew that a ring might help to nail him. You're not wearing your diamond, Haywood. No, but I have a gun. Haywood, don't make a move, Captain, or any of you. Haywood, you... I'm the man Casey's accusing, C.J. I don't know whether he can back up his accusation, but I'm taking no chances. I'm getting out of here, and no one's going to stop me. Is that so? Oh. Uh, Anne. Miss Williams. Well, he hit me on the head last night, didn't he? Yeah, but how? Hey, this guy's out cold, and all you hit him with is that little handbag. Ha uh-huh, ha, this little handbag has half a brick in it. Half a brick? Mm, I put it in there this morning, just hoping I'd get a chance like this. You... Logan, the female of the species is, is more deadly than, than the male. The male. <laughs> So now you're a K.O. artist, huh, Miss Williams? <laughs> Haywood didn't come to till he reached the old jail. <laughs> mm, well, I only gave him half of what's coming to him. Has he owned up that he killed that cashier and, and Milton? Mm-hmm. After a bulldozer went to work on that landslide this morning and uncovered the cashier's body. Hmm. Miss Williams, that's a swell ring on your finger. Where did Ask you... Casey. 
Uh, uh, well, uh, you see, that was... It was C.J. Winber's ring. He, he, uh, he wanted me to have it as a reward for trapping Haywood, but, of course, I got no use for diamonds, so... So, uh, Mr. Winber gave it to me. It kind of looks like an engagement ring. Well, it isn't. Uh, uh, Annie, I, uh, I priced a beautiful little house today way out in the country. A house. Oh, way out in the country. <sighs> well? I couldn't afford it. Hmm. I'm going home. Good night. Oh, well, well, wait a minute, Annie. Annie, wait for me. I don't blame her. Who'd want to live way out in the country? <laughs> This adventure of crime photographer starring Stott Cotsworth as Casey came to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Welcome back. An interesting episode, and I think we can question at this point whether it's so much that Casey doesn't know about women as Casey just refuses to learn. You know, Ethelbert gave him the point that uh, teasing or uh, joking about diamond engagement rings was probably not a good idea. And so what do we get at the end of the episode? He decides that, hey, why don't I try joking about uh, settling down and buying a place? And I will say this, uh, Brooksy on Let George Do It would get teased by George like a two out of three episodes, you know, when you get into the 50s and uh, he would hint at uh, potential marriage. Uh, and she would just kind of give a, like, oh, George. Uh, but Anne would not have any of it. So hats off to her. And uh, I definitely appreciated her use of the purse to capture the villain. You know, those big purses can could be weapons, obviously. But you put a a brick and a little purse, yeah, that'll work. And if you've got just enough arm strength, it'll do as well, if not better than a punch from Casey Crime Photographer. Now it is time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Jeff, Patreon supporter since December 2015, currently supporting the show at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for your support, Jeff. And that will do it for today. We'll be back with another episode of Casey Crime Photographer. Coming up tomorrow, it's time for that man that the police call Chameleon, whose last name actually is Chameleon, Mr. Chameleon, where... I'm not a baby. It's only 10 o'clock, Helene. I have a right to go out and enjoy myself, haven't I? No, you haven't, Lois. Not if you're going to play bridge for money. But that's ridiculous. You do it yourself all the time. Last month you paid the rent here with the money you made at bridge. Lois... You're always next door playing with the smallies. 
And just because they asked me to a couple of parties. You're too young for that sort of thing. You're only 20, Lois. Since Dad and Mother died, I've had to look after you. And I intend to go on doing it whether you like it or not. But the Smallies have been so kind to us. I didn't say they weren't. I simply said that I won't have you playing cards for money. I'll answer that. And don't think I finished with you. I haven't. It may be Edgar. I hope it's Edgar. The sooner you marry him, the better I'll be pleased. Yes? Oh, hello there. What's that? Elaine! Elaine, what happened? I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.